Archaeological curation in the lab. Curation? Archaeological curation. What's that? All right, this is a quick little definition of, of what this deal is because it's actually pretty straightforward and it's actually pretty important. Archaeological curation is the long-term storage of artifacts. Scary moments where you have pieces of paperwork put in front of you that say things like, in perpetuity, forever. Don't sign that unless you know what you're signing. What do I mean by curation? This long-term storage... Once you find all these artifacts and you bag them and tag them and you've measured them and you got your typology that you've organized them by, you got to put them somewhere. Does the museum want your 4,256 broken pot shirts? No. Who does? Oh, the, the local archaeology group. Oh, the, the university. Nobody wants them. They take up space, they're kind of second-class citizens in archaeology, these lower-end artifacts. What are you going to do? You have to know where you're ultimately going to store all your stuff before you find it. So in archaeology, this curation, this long-term storage of artifacts, you also have, right with it, little bedfellow, a crisis in curation. Long story short, there's no more room left. UCLA does not want your broken bits of stone. They really don't. Nobody does. So you have to be really, really careful with how much you dig. You don't want to dig too much. I've seen this time and time again. I will say that a lot of archaeologists I've seen over time are guilty of this, of digging too much. You have to be really careful in terms of what you dig. You, that's why your research design, wants, you want to be really focused on that, right? Because the more focused you are, the less you really have to dig because you'll get the information that you need to answer your question, right? You don't just want to keep everything. And honestly, there's no real reason to keep everything. So at the archeology span site, first you don't want to dig too much, and sometimes you have to make a bold decision here and there of like, no, we're gonna throw this back. Or no, we're gonna dump this out. That's okay. It's okay, very low end artifacts, like um, in, uh, in Belize, in Central America, when you work on a Maya site, you will literally find tens of thousands of broken pieces of pottery. Do you keep them all? No, you can't. You're doing a disservice, honestly, to the archaeological world if you keep 10,000 broken body shards, which are the ones that tell you the least about the past. You have to have some plan there. I will say, um, in the past, we've done things like, yes, you dig them up, and yes, you record them. You know, you, you record this information that you found, but then we've done things like we've, we've put in these broken bits of, of ceramics in huge garbage bags, and buried them back at the site where we originally found them. I thought it was genius. Bury them back in the same hole that you found them in, in a bag. So if an archeologist a hundred years from now needs that stuff, they could go back up there and re-excavate them out and pull the bag out and analyze to their heart's content. In, in America, I find that most American archeologists tend to keep too much. When you see other archaeology projects in other areas of the world, they will they will angle down and keep less. You'll hear some archaeologists being like, oh, I can't believe that they haven't kept it all. It's like, well, archaeology is ultimately about using artifacts to tell the story of the past. Once you've gotten the story out of these artifacts, you have to make those tough calls in terms of what to keep and what not to keep. Here in California, it's Shell. We work at, at Shell Middens on the beach. Of course, there'll be village sites that were there for thousands of years. You'll have thousands of years worth of broken marine shell that the people who used to live there ate 
They ate the marine shell and they discarded the shell bits and fragments. Do you keep every bit of shell? No. But you, you come up with some scheme like I'll keep 10%, I'll keep 25%, I'll keep a sample. That's okay. The rest, do you toss it? Yes. Usually back at the site. Same kind of thing as the Belize example. You just take it and you 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 basically fill the hole back up with it. You record it, of course. So the next archaeologist, years from now who comes, they realize they're not re-digging up your old stuff. But this this curation thing, this is an important thing, man. So I want you guys to realize that 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 archaeology, it's not about just keeping the shiny stuff and throwing everything out. That's not right. That's not reasonable. It's not ethical. But on the flip side, I would argue that it that it is ethical to discard some things and keep a percentage of them, not all of them, because you can't. There's a lame uh, thing that archaeologists will say to defend keeping everything. They'll be like, well, you know, at some point in the future, an archaeologist will want to study this. A, they were really going to want to study your broken potsherds that you, you already kept 2,000. They need the other 8,000? Really? 50 years from now? Really? I bet not. Second, if they need them, they can look at the report at where we buried them and they can go get them again. So let's not overstuff the back rooms of the museums around America, because trust me, that's what's happening. There is a crisis in curation. So as an archeologist, we dig judiciously. We make smaller holes rather than big mamas, right? And we have a plan in our research design of what to do with the artifacts we find before we find them.